it says somewhere on the website that I'm a, a professor of public art. Actually, I'm the professor of public art. <laughs> There's only one, as far as I know. I hope that this slide will work and I'll show you some, some public art. I mean, what is public art? Uh, it's the bronze man on the horse, right? It's the, uh, the guy holding a sword in the middle of town, uh, usually with a, a Latin inscription of some kind. Um, why do they call it public art? I mean, what is it, which public are they trying to actually represent? This, is, this has really been the, kind of the, the, the birth of the kind of work that we make. It seems to me that there are very clear categories of public art. Um, you know, the bronze man on the horse is definitely one of them. Um, the highly polished rock is another one. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you guys have seen this in the millions, but I've certainly seen lots of them. There are other, other I mean, these ones are particularly interesting because they tend to be rocky, and there's often um, a small plaque. Sometimes there's not a plaque at all. Um, it's almost like the artist was a little bit embarrassed about saying it, he did it. Um, but yeah, the, the highly polished rock is a particular favourite of mine. Um, the other ones, of course, are... Uh, the figurative statues that we find a lot, some of these might be uh, on uh, train stations. You've seen the ones, the train stations, the guy trying to get on the train, or you know, if you go in the city, there's, there's bankers, you know, kind of running out of buildings, and um, I think this is Michael Jackson. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is, as you probably know, outside of Fulham football ground. Um, Mohammed al Fayed commissioned it. I mean, the thing about, actually, while we're on the subject, now I know, you, I know it's wrong to be rude. I mean, Nelson Mandela is a saint. But this statue has been described as an alien paedophile come to steal your children. <laughs> um, now, I mean, I don't... I do, do, it's, it's, I mean, it's not a pose that I would have, I would have created for the father of democracy or whatever his, you know... Um, yes. Who is the public art that they rec represent? These things, to me, seem very clearly set at a physical distance. I mean... If we go back to the bronze man on the horse, he's six metres up in the air, usually. Uh, he's physically something way out of my league. I can't get on there, even though I want to sit on the horse. I, want, you know, I, I don't read Latin, so I have no idea what, what, what it's saying about and who he represents. But I think, more importantly, it's, it's the psychological problem. Who is the man? What, what is he representing? What is the message that's trying to be you know, set across? And so, from, from a very early age, I tried to create work that was very much involved with the public. That's to say, work that used the public in its creation. And I think that came from my family. My family are all a bunch of musicians. All, everyone plays in my family. Um, the quality of our... Incidentally, um, that's not my family. <laughs> um, but it is a family playing music, and I couldn't find an actual picture of my family playing. But basically, if we assume that this is my dad and this is my mum, and my brother over there. Um, it's, we, we are, basically there's one rule in the family and that is you play. It's not about quality and it's certainly not about knowing all the words, which is a real shame actually in a lot of cases, but it's just getting stuck in, it's getting involved. And that was one of the kind of things I think that I took from that when I started to make the work. And I'm just gonna show you very, very quickly, I'm gonna shoot through loads of different ways of approaching public art, which for me have a better definition. Um, because of the, you know, sort of my upbringing with sound and music, my first installations were all based around sound. You know, as a child, you pick up a stick and run it along railings, you know, and get that lovely ch 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 sound. We took a set of railings and we tuned them. So when you ran a stick along it, it played the girl from Ipanema. <laughs> now, for me, this was something that, that public art really hadn't achieved in the sense that, that sounds pompous. What, what I mean to say is this is still a set of railings. You can still chain your bike to it, you know. It still stops you getting into the park. Um, this is another kind of approach. This is a little family. These three I'm going to show you now are family based around sound because they were the kind of the earliest stuff I did. This is a bridge in Dublin. We carpeted it with a bright blue carpet. And tiny sensors embedded in the carpet detected your motion as you move and made sound. So when you walk across this bridge, you walk through crunchy snow or you splosh through water or you walk through crunchy leaves. Um, this, was, this was actually temporary, but we've made permanent installations of this in different parts of the world. Um, and this is something that we launched just last year. It's um, in Grisdale in the north of England. Clockwork keys have suddenly sprouted out of trees all the way through the, through the National Forest up there, just begging you to turn them. And of course, you have to turn them.
And you can just see in the background there are, tree, there are keys all over this place. Some of them are far up in the canopy where you can't reach them. Some of them, tiny little keys, just down there for the little people that might want to turn small amount silk keys down there. Um, we like to think of this as a sort of the first chapter in a story. You don't need to tell anybody what to do with a key. Um, and so, yeah, these are in the, you should come see it, it's called Clockwork Forest. Incidentally, this is called Clockwork Forest. The, the project before was called Bridge, and the one before that was called Railings. Um, <laughs> I've always thought, I mean, we've got artist friends who might have called that Momentary Lapse of Reason, part six, <laughs> untitled. Um, but uh, I've always thought if you need a really clever name, you're probably missing something out in the artwork. Um, anyhow, so yeah, that, that's kind of a first little set, and this is kind of a, more of a sonic approach to, to, to making work. This is another way of looking at, at work. Um, let's try that. Five bins and six benches in Cambridge. This is sadly not there anymore, but for four years, they, these, um, these were installed in a, in a town square in Cambridge. But you could whistle to them, and they would come over to you. Um, uh, on a Tuesday, the bin man would be very happy because the bins would make themselves into a nice little line so that the bin man could come and empty them. Um, they're all solar ch powered. You can see they've got their little solar cells on them so they could roam free. Incidentally, it's a bit of a shit life being a bin. Um, they were rather solitary creatures, but the benches had a really good laugh. Um, this, um, this is a permanent installation in Leicester. Um, six, 36 bollards in the middle of, middle of Leicester. Um, we took them away and replaced them with bollards that looked almost exactly the same um, until you approached one. And as you did, points of light emerged. And as you passed by, each one rotated. And in fact, it was a music box. So you could set off a little trail of music as you walked through um, the, the city. And what's really particularly nice about it is you could stay and, and see that somebody had walked through the square just by watching the, the, uh, the bollards come to rest. Um, most of our stuff is about reappropriating what you find in public spaces. You know, so we've done bollards and park benches and... In fact, a guy called me up and asked me to speak at a conference a little while ago and said, we'd like you to speak at a conference. And I said, cool. And he said, uh, I said, what's it about? And he said, it's about obsession. I was like, oh dear, what, what do you think I'm obsessed with? And the guy was, well, park benches. You're totally obsessed with park benches. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'm not. What are you talking about? And he goes, well, you are. And then I looked through the work we've done and actually there's about nine park benches in there in different ways. I mean, Park Bench is a wonderful model for, for me, for urban life. I mean, it's a place where you sit and eat your sandwiches at lunchtime. It's a place where you meet your girlfriend after work. Uh, it's a place where you sleep when she throws you out of the house. Um, and it's a place where you may propose to her, perhaps, when you, you get back together again. And I, I, I think the Park, park Bench is a, it's a fantastic little metaphor for sort of interesting social life or fun social life. Um, but obviously some of the other things that we can reappropriate are the bronze statues, and, and this is a permanent work. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but this is outside Tate Modern. Um, this is one of ours. It's a bronze statue of an artist holding a paintbrush, looking at Tate Modern. Uh, when you walk past him, two hidden cameras look at you and tries to copy the pose that you're in before going back to being a bronze statue. He's actually a giant animatronic figure. Um, he actually also, of course, has a Latin inscription. Um, in fact, he has a few that we switch out when we get bored. The, the one that's on there at the moment is quid quid latin dictum sit videtur est, which translated means anything written in Latin sounds clever. Um, <laughs> um, and so we've got a bunch of those. We're going to have a look at him. He's, he's in Sumner Street. Um, let's see what this does. And this is in Spitalfields. Now, this one actually isn't in a public space. This is inside a building. Um, it, 3,000 lawyers get to see this. Um, I mean, not that lawyers aren't real people or nice people. Um, they should get art too. They're just not the kind of general public that generally we... Uh, I'm going to just stop this little conversation again a bit. <laughs> Basically, these, these are flowers, as you can tell, but they're kind of slightly unusual. Imagine them to be like um, umbrellas. OK, I'm an umbrella. Um, and when you close the umbrella, you can't see the stuff inside. But when they're open, you can see the big bright colours. In this instance, there's, this is an 11-storey atrium. There's a glass lift that's in the atrium. And as you rise up inside the lift, all the flowers open to follow the lift as it rises up inside. And we also have a little sensor in the top. When the sun comes out, the flowers can open to, to look at the sun from the, from the roof. Um, so I suppose those three are really about, about systems, art systems. So you can look at things sonically. You can look at things from an art system point of view. You can look at uh, the interaction. But sometimes, the most complicated works of all, like this one, are actually have the most simple and most profound of effects. And this is one of the, the, the most successful things we did from our point of view. 
I don't know if you guys saw this, but this was a couple of, couple of weeks ago in Trafalgar Square. We, we created a two and a half ton, nine meter diameter, 260,000 watt sun um, at 5 a.m. <laughs> for a few hours. It was a little bit mad, but it was really exciting. And um, here's some pictures of it. Every time I look at you, I smile. Okay, we're right down to the end now. I'm just going to totally show off about the sun again because I want to show you this. This is, they actually gave us the keys to Trafalgar Square, right? We could switch the fountains off, everything. It was <laughs> awesome. So, this is the time lapse of us doing it. It's just fabulous. meter high crane One really, really quick, quick slide and the conclusion, really, just a, a super quick thing. Look, galleries and museums, that's where we, we, artists can do whatever they like. They can create what they want. They can make what they like. If they want to do a pile of bricks, that's cool. If they want to model some genitals or, or you know, stick things in themselves, it's absolutely cool. I think when it comes to public art, and I suppose this is the point of what I'm really getting to, getting to there are other considerations. I mean, we all are the public. We live in and amongst these things. And I think if you don't consider the public when you make the work, you risk being an arrogant artist that comes along and tells you what you should like. And I suppose really what Greywood are about and what really, really kind of interests us the most is creating work which holds up a mirror to us and makes us the centre of the work. Thank you very much. Thank you.